Hi guys, today I'm going to show you the Kubings Professional Juicer. Now this is a commercial juicer and Kubings sent me the sample so I can show you how it works. It's NSF certified. NSF is an organization that tests, inspects, and certifies products to make sure they meet health and safety standards. This commercial juicer can be used in a cafe, juice bar, restaurant, or even for a large family if you do a lot of juicing. It's a cold press masticating juicer. Since it rotates slowly at 60 RPMs, it is quiet and shouldn't vibrate much. It's got a heavy duty 200 watt motor and you can run it up to 24 hours. The slow speed prevents oxidation and separation of the juice and you can store it in the fridge for a couple of days without it breaking down. The juicer is 20 inches in height, seven inches wide and 10 and a half inches deep. The cord length is about 52 inches. It is heavy at 20 pounds. I'll show you all the different parts how to put it together and then start juicing. The base and the bowl are stainless steel. It looks like it is fingerprint resistant. This is the top set and two of them are included with this juicer. Although this juicer can be run for 24 hours straight, it is recommended to change the top set after 20 minutes or after you juice about 70 ounces or two liters. There is an arrow in the back of the base that you can match up with the arrow on the back of the feed tube. The back of the unit has the power switch forward to start juicing and reverse if something gets stuck. This is the stainless steel juicing bowl. This is the smart cap. When you open the box, this comes separate. Just push it onto the spout. The inside is very simple. There are no parts. It should be easy to clean. There's plastic around the bottom. When you're juicing, juice comes out of the spout and pulp comes out of this plastic pulp spout. There are two strainers, the regular juicing strainer and a coarse strainer. The coarse strainer gives you more pulp in your juice and is best for oranges and pineapple. It'll give you a thicker juice. On the bottom, there's a gasket. There are two extra gaskets included in case this one wears out. This is the juicing screw, a pusher, a juice cup that holds 48 ounces or 1400 milliliters, a cup to catch the pulp, the feeding tube, slide this tab, and the flap opens. The feed chute is really wide at three and a half inches or 88 millimeters. You can juice whole apples and tomatoes since the feed chute is so big. Close the flap and slide the tab over and you can put in carrots, celery, smaller ingredients. This is the lid opener. In case the lid gets stuck, you can use this tool to open it. For cleaning, there's a rotating brush. Insert the strainer right into the brush. And you can just turn it back and forth under running water. It's an effective tool to clean the strainer. There's also a brush you can use to clean. And a second brush that you can stick in the spout to get anything that is stuck. It's best to clean the juicer right after you finish juicing. Don't wait because everything will dry up and it'll be harder to clean. When you first get the unit, wash all the parts in warm soapy water and dry. They're not dishwasher safe. The base can be wiped down with a damp cloth and dried. All the parts are BPA free. I'll show you how to assemble the top set. You've got the bowl. Put the strainer in the bowl. There's a red dot on the strainer that matches the dot on the bowl. The juicing screw next. Push it all the way in. Then the lid, we've got the red dot, open and close. Just match up the red dot with the red dot on the screen and the bowl. And just turn it to close. Now the top set is assembled. It simply sits in the base. Now the juicer is assembled. Place the juice cup in front of the spout and the cup for the pulp on the side. If you want to mix different types of juices in the bowl, you can leave the smart cap closed. I always leave the cap open though, because you never know when the bowl's going to fill up and overflow. You might not keep track of it. So it's best to leave this open all the time. While you're juicing, you'll be able to see the ingredients getting crushed through here and also see if anything is stuck. If anything gets stuck, turn the switch to O and then hold the reverse button until the food dislodges. If that doesn't work, turn the juicer off 
disassemble it and then clean it. With this juicer, go slow. It's not a centrifugal juicer. You can't throw um, apples and oranges in here really fast and expect it to be processed very quickly or effectively. Spend the time to cut up produce to get the most yield and avoid clogging. Otherwise, you're going to spend more time stopping and reversing or even taking off the top and disassembling it if something is stuck. There's a manual that's included, a really nice recipe book, lovely pictures, and there's some tips and information like celery juice helps with acid reflux, bloating, IBS, acne, eczema, and many other inflammatory issues in the body. Green juice recipes, lemonade, strawberry banana delight, banana boost, blueberry spritzer, pretty much juices in every color. Also a very important quick guide. It tells you how to prep different fruits and vegetables like apples, pears, strawberries, tomatoes. You want to remove the stems, oranges and lemons. You want to take the rind off hard vegetables like carrots, beets, and ginger. You want to cut into small pieces, remove the rind of watermelons, pineapple, melon, and orange leafy vegetables like kale, wheatgrass, spinach, celery. You do want to cut them into small pieces. Um, it's easy for the leafy greens to gets stuck around the screw. With apricots, plums, and mangoes, you want to remove the pit or the seed. It's best to remove any seeds from whatever it is that you're juicing. Now I'll start juicing. I'm going to use whole apples. They will fit in the chute. These are smaller apples. If you're using large apples, you do have to cut them up. I've washed them. I'm just going to take the stem off and juice them. I'll also cut up these carrots and then juice them. You don't want to just throw them whole into the juicer. Lots of kale. Just tear them into small pieces. The stems you can juice, but also cut them into small pieces. The leaves, it's best to roll them up tightly. You get the most juice this way. This is about four pounds of carrots, three huge bunches of kale, and 12 pounds of apples. I'll juice all those, see how long it takes. I don't want to go past 20 minutes because you are supposed to change out the top set after 20 minutes. If you've watched my other reviews, you know how I feel about kale. So I'm not going to juice this first. I'm going to juice just some apples first so I can actually drink that juice later and find somebody to give all this kale juice to. I've cut up the carrots into about an inch and a half long pieces. Put the juice cup under the spout and the pulp cup to the side. The top set is assembled. It just sits on the base. I'll set my alarm to 20 minutes. I'll juice pretty much nonstop except to get a container to pour any of the juice out. If anything gets stuck, I'll use the pusher. Remember when you juice anything to go slowly. Don't keep putting in one apple after the other. Make sure that this one gets processed before you put in the next one. Open the flap, plug in the unit and just press forward on the button in the back. Make sure the spout is open. You can always close the uh, cap and pour out the juice. Now 
for the carrots and the kale, you can close the flap. You can alternate the carrots, kale, and apple. minutes are up, I'm going to keep juicing. Nothing's gotten stuck in the meantime. You only want to turn off the unit when the juice is dripping. Even after you put your last ingredient in, wait about 30 seconds because the juicer is still processing. And you want to get as much juice as possible into the cup. If you tip the juicer over a little bit, um, some of the juice will come out. So it's been about 22 minutes. I've stopped the unit. You've got six cups here, a little over three cups. That's four cups and this is at least another cup. It's a good amount of juice. I could have probably fed 
um, the shoot a little bit faster, but I like to be careful and not overload the machine. So almost 15 cups of juice in 20 minutes. The green juice is pretty tasty actually only because I added the apple. It's pretty much what I say in every juicer video because I'm not a big fan of kale juice. This tastes really good because the apples are sweet and they overwhelm the flavor of the kale. The carrots are also sweet, so that helps. The apple juice, it's really good. It's just pure sweet apple juice. Probably the healthiest thing I've had all week. You can see the foam on top, of course. You can remove that before you drink the juice or just stir it back in. It's really your preference. You don't have to drink this juice right away. You can put it in the refrigerator in airtight containers. I started with three bunches of kale and I think I have more than two bunches left. Carrots, you saw how full they were. I didn't even juice that many carrots and we got lots of juice. I still have a lot of apples to juice in here. The pulp is very dry. I'm really impressed with that. You can't squeeze even a drop of juice out of the pulp. You can see how dry they are. They hold together. This is also because the apples I used were nice and firm. They're not mushy or old. If you're using mushy apples, old apples, soft apples, you're going to get less juice and more pulp. The carrots were also nice and firm. And the kale was fresh. So you're going to get the most yield out of using fresh produce and firm produce. Nothing got stuck and I didn't have to use the pusher even once. So I went a little nuts and got too many apples, but um, I'm not going to be juicing all of them because I got about 20 pounds of apples. You saw in the 20 minutes what this juicer can handle. And if I go another 20, I think the juicer will be just fine because it had no issues the first 20 minutes. These are probably going to make their way into many pies. After you unplug the machine, just turn the lid. You see nothing is stuck in here. It's very easy to clean. Just rinse it out. You can just lift the rest of it out. You can see some of the kale here. Take the screw out. The kale is fibrous. But because I cut it into small pieces, nothing wrapped around the screw and got stuck. When you wash this, make sure you get all of this stuff out here. You can see everything just wipes off really easily. It's easy to clean out. There are no crevices where ingredients can get stuck. Here's the strainer. There's some kale here, but it pulls out. Everything inside can just come out easily. Again, you could just rinse this, use the brush or the cleaning tool and just put it under running water. You can rinse out the inside and get all this with the brush. The back of this brush is also helpful in getting some of the stuff out here. So it's really not complicated to clean. You can pull out the spout and clean that. I just rinsed all the parts and it was very easy to clean. The part that takes the longest is the screen, but even this only took about two, three minutes. Just use the brush and really scrub the screen to get everything out. You want to make sure all the holes are clean and clear so juice can flow out easily and you'll get the most yield. The lid is very easy just to rinse out. The screw is also pretty quick to clean. I want to show you the coarse screen, so I'll try it out with some pineapple and oranges. Mess the red dot with the dot here. Push the screw in. And the lid. I've got two whole oranges. I've just taken the peel off and most of the pith. And a large pineapple cut up into about inch and a half pieces. I didn't cut the core out, I left it in.
That took a little over four minutes. The juice is a gorgeous orange and yellow color. The pulp is of course gonna be more wet than the kale and carrots and apple because this is softer. There's only a couple of drops of juice you can squeeze out of this. This is just about four cups of juice. You can see the foam on top. Of course, you can imagine orange and pineapple together. It tastes amazing. There's barely anything in the lid. I cut the pineapple up so there really shouldn't be anything in the lid. Again, nothing is wrapped around the screw. It's pretty clean. The coarse screen has some pineapple, just like the kale in here. This will also clean up pretty easy because um, you have the brush to scrape all this off with. There's really nothing in here except a little bit right by where the spout is, but you can even push it up and it'll come out. All the parts seem to be designed well and it looks like the amount of cleanup will be reduced. And remember, when you purchase this unit, you get two of the top sets so you can change it out after 20 minutes and somebody else can be cleaning this and if you own a restaurant or a juice bar you could just put the second clean set on and keep juicing. This juicer can run up to 24 hours but it's unlikely that any cafe or restaurant is actually going to run it 24 hours straight. I would guess a couple of hours max. When compared to other professional juicers that are NSF certified this Kuvings is reasonably priced. If you want to get this juicer, I'll put a link right below this video. Again, this is a professional model, so it's best for restaurants, cafes, etc. If you want um, it for home use, I would suggest another model that has a longer warranty, and I'll put a link to that right below.